Hello viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're going to talk about an interesting topic about Astro B NASA robot that is right now in ISS. So let's dive right into it. So first we have to understand what the heck we are talking about. Well, we are talking about a free flying robotic system. Now again, free flying simply means it does not need assistance. Nobody is going to be there like, you know, controlling with the remote control. They are just going to tell it like go point, uh, point A to point B and like uh, Unity module to let's say Japanese module. They are not going to be like, okay, uh, you know, control, send it to remote control. So it's completely autonomous. Now it's a system. It's not meant for one robot system to do everything. They're going to be three. Now each of them have their own unique names and the uh, in what the heck they are supposed to do is reduce the workload in ISS and they're supposed to work in teams because they, uh, they are talking about low G environment basically zero G they can do quite amazing things if they are working in teams basically quote unquote swarm robotics question becomes why the heck we want to do it well uh, astronauts have a lot of repetitive work basically you may think okay they are astronauts they are cool and they are like you know scientists and uh, engineers and whatever have you uh, but when you actually see their day-to-day -day dossier is basically what you have to do when you get up to you go to sleep it's a lot of repetitive work basically you take 10,000 measurement take 50,000 inventories things of that nature it's not glamorous nor it's useful it's a uh, and when I say useful I'm like it has to be done it's just that it's really not something that uh, you know should take human intervention so uh, taking inventory data logging they want to put uh, all those work into uh, basically robots hand rather than human because there are experiment on ISS that are being conducted that require humans con uh, constant uh, you know uh, intervention but uh, again because they have to do so many other things so many repeated things they do, uh, those experiments do not get the attention they deserve and not to mention many other experiments are rejected because they have so much workload so that is why they wanted like okay uh, instead of your uh, like half a day just like a half a working day just dedicated to repetitive work let's put uh, like you know let's reduce that to like you know 25 percent or 10 percent that would be a huge uh, like you know advancement to everything basically if these people again they will feel better because repetitive work is not good for anyone so they will feel better and on top of that more science can be done because they are not wasting time you know taking 10,000 readings and all that so it is not something that you know uh, oh you luxury it's something that will tangibly help our situation here and not to mention this is not the first time that we are doing something like this because the moment we went into space we realized it we need extra sets of eye because from ground based telescope you simply can't do anything so uh, the space shuttle era had their own football basically it had cameras multiple camera and it had nitrogen thrusters that will help it to fly with uh, its own light and all that so it was controlled by ground control or the astronauts in the basically space shuttle itself and it allowed them to have an extra pairs of eyes basically they can see uh, let's say there are uh, two astronauts are handling the eye uh, uh, basically Hubble telescope and they had to see uh, what's happening to the door and all the other mechanism it can go around and see it basically it was completely untethered it was meant to work in space uh, this was gen 1 basically then the, there is gen 2 which is basically spheres now uh, this was like you know uh, they tried to do everything inside the ISS and they learned a lot from this basically how the heck you're gonna handle uh, you know fuel systems and all that because again think of them as a training ground basically they learned the things how the heck you're gonna let's say recover uh, spent boosters and all that in space for many experiments so all of these missions they taught us a lot of things all of that knowledge is now being put into uh, basically this system now so how does this actually work in tangible definitions basically if you have to understand this think of this is just a drone now when you are talking about drone on earth again you can see it is very dangerous you have spinning blades so flat out you cannot have spinning blades in ISS not only it's dangerous for human it could also uh, you know damage the ISS because ISS has a lot of exposed uh, electronics a lot of uh, wiring pipes and all that so for that reason you simply cannot have that so and there is one advantage of ISS it's in zero G so when you are talking about drones on earth most of the energy of drone let's say you have 100 watt hour battery most of that energy will go into one direction and that is downwards just to make sure they can cancel out the gravity you do not have that restriction when you are in zero G or free falling so they utilizing that uh, you know freedom they are this, uh, this whole system is designed a bit differently so they have a one central impeller on the uh, both side basically uh, so what this impeller will do is basically suck air in, pressurize it, basically take the air uh, what is on uh, normal 8 psi to 15 psi, pressurize it to whatever uh, degree they want depending on the requirement and then they control uh, they control the release of it, basically you have the pressurized air, now they're going to be like 
they gotta do it because there are nozzles all around the body you can see these nozzles nozzles it's like everywhere on 360 degree because it has to move in uh, basically three axes x y z it has to move in all three and it also must have the ability to twist and turn so everywhere it's basically has nozzles so impellers are pressurizing the air that pressurized air being released uh, you know in small controlled amount using the nozzles computerized nozzle that's how it's flying in quote unquote flying in is basically it's not flying it's controlled floating would be a more appropriate term now again cameras are very important ISS like uh, because if you can have extra sets of eye instead of uh, astronauts uh, like you know relaying information back to the ground control is like okay this is what we are seeing here they can directly have video feed from this puppy directly go into uh, uh, ground control right now if they want to do something like that they have to have uh, astronaut uh, go there mount a camera stay next to the cameras again cameras are not built like they don't have security cams there it's not built to control it and if they have to change the angle they have to call the astronaut and do it again so you can understand basically the astronaut is occupied all the time so this is supposed to uh, alleviate some of those needs basically if they need it without contacting the astronaut they will be like okay there will be this bee coming around it's like let it go it will go in that area and it will do the uh, you know all the data logging that it needs to do now it is self-guiding so it has navigation cam everywhere basically all 360 degree of it hazard cam to avoid uh, basically hitting into other things and the design is built in such a way that if it hits it even at maximum velocity it can do it will not cause any serious damage or injury to anybody basically it's 100 percent quote unquote human safe it has laser pointer power switch and a touch screen now touch screen is a interface just like if you have to tell uh, astronauts some uh, critical data uh, you can just show it in front of them and it will have cool animations just to like you know uh, make people feel a bit more comfortable around it now on top of it basically you have all most systems are occupied but on top like there is a bay empty bay now that bay is what we call payload bay now that payload bay will have this uh, robotic arm now this arm is not there just to like you know look cool or uh, fancy and all that it has a primary advan uh, advantage because iss is in zero g environment everywhere there is handrail so astronauts can move around this will utilize those handrail as tripod uh, mounting points basically if uh, for some reason they have to do a sweeping pan action and all that they can just uh, use the gripper grip itself into a pan and turn off the impellers because impellers consume a lot of power and utilizing the small servo motors on the joints they can move around so it is very important it will allow them to conserve energy and do long-term missions so let's say for some reason uh, they have to uh, basically uh, reboosting let's say mia station is reboosting the iss then it will be physically moving and if you anything that is floating inside will be pushed back so you you will have this clamp down rather than like you know it firing its uh, thrusters at full power so it is quite useful on top of that this can be changed with other things other payloads can be put into it like uh, two primary payloads that i am aware of is basically radiation dosimeter so they can like uh, get a thorough analysis rather than like having few uh, you know uh, few sensors they can have like full 360 degree every single square meter it can keep uh, going there and uh, you know doing a full analysis basically they can give oh when it's sun side this area gets more exposed when it's a uh, lunar side this gets more exposed lunar side is like where the moon is because moon is also blocking a lot of uh, gamma rays so you can get the idea like there's a lot of advantage to be had something that can move anywhere in iss basically anywhere inside volume air quality sensor that is quite uh, critical basically so those are just two uh, there could be many more that i don't i'm not even aware of or maybe once it's actually out there somebody will figure out other use cases because you have to understand these are controlled by ground they can be controlled from iss itself but they will also have a uh, you know competition for students 15 year old students uh, you know school challenges known as zero g competition in that people will upload some codes into this to test it out so it has a lot of advantages just a flying drone so are there any use of this like you know spending this uh, kind of money into it well yes because a right now you may think okay all it can do is act as a camera and as act as a flying sensor again that's more than good enough for justifying its cost on top of that what it can unlock that is much more interesting because this is a test bed by definition it's a test bed basically we have something let's figure out what we can do with it so they already have two uh, right now and they will have 10 more so like okay do this on that and uh, let's say as the gripper become more uh, practical more capable right now it has the ability to to move objects in ISS basically let's say they have to move one experimented from uh, let's say from talk to spacecraft to uh, unity module or things of that nature it can do that right now it can do that what if uh, we can have like instead of uh, three we can have six or seven doing like big chunks works so all those there are like a lot of potential into this and more experiment will lead us to like figure out okay this it can actually do this it cannot do it sounds good on paper it does not work or this works or astronauts may themselves figure out hey this could uh, act or do this or that so it is very uh, important to understand this is a test but this is like just the opening 
and this will help us with upkeeps now think of this way iss is in lowest orbit and it is always manned there is always somebody in iss 24 into 7 into 365 until its day of deep commission there always will be someone like again in case of emergency they may have to evacuate it but so far it has not happened so you have to understand this it is uh, like very well maintained now when you are talking about log g there is a very serious probability in log g that log g will not have that status where you know 100 uh, percent of the time somebody is there occupying it and not to mention log g is not also meant for that kind of uh, people basically Lobji will not have same complement instead of seven eight they may be reduced to four or three so in those sort of scenario uh, having this kind of robotics there it could be a very good for maintenance let's say uh, astronauts are going home uh, nobody would be there these robots can help us as a like you know extra layer of safety basically they can fly to fly around double check everything and next generation may have stronger arms that are more capable of doing things so ground control could have a direct link uh, you know what's happening inside the station so these are quite useful tools and uh, future exploration is like uh, let's say you are figured out some sort of hibernation for humans and and uh, you froze everyone and uh, basically ship to Mars during that six months ground control can utilizing this can directly take care of the ship without requiring any astronaut to be awake the whole journey so it's quite useful it's not it may, it's not just a flying toy it's a very useful tool so this was my presentation on uh, flying the water of uh, NASA. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I would urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me your disappointment. And please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.